Hello traders, it is Tuesday, May 16th. This is the Silver Bullet Review, where we take a look at the setups for the day in hopes of training our eyes to see these setups in real time and pull five points or more from the market. So first thing we're gonna do today, I'm doing it a little bit different, so I wanna start off with uh, SMT divergence. So you can see NQ, we had the 8.30 high on NQ here, ES and YM, and at 9.45, or actually even before then, at 9.30, that high gets taken out on NQ and continues higher. So at the close of the 9.45 candle, that's this bearish candle, we have taken out this high. Whereas the close of the 9.45 candle on ES, we did we not only failed to take it out, but we swept the high of the previous candle and took out the low. So bearish, it's like it it was it didn't have the gas. Same thing with YM. Uh, didn't have the gas to break that 830 high. As well, if you look at what happened, dollar, dollar had already come down, swept an area and started higher. And then let's zoom in a little more. At the close of the 9.45 candle, which would have been 10 o'clock, which is the beginning of the silver bullet trading hour, um, you know, it, it engulfed this bearish candle. So this, this little pullback after a structure break in dollar was showing strength. So generally, strong dollar, weak indices. Well, as we all know in hindsight, NASDAQ wasn't having that. But the other two markets were. So the way I generally use SMT divergence is it doesn't matter if this one's going, uh, showing strength. It's just there's divergence and dollar strength should mean I need to be looking for weakness and we get that here. So starting from that premise, let's drop down to the lower time frame and actually take a closer look at ES. Looking at ES and some key levels that have been noted here. First of all, we have the Asia session, the high and the low. We had a London session, high, low. And what we can see in London was it took out uh, pre-London, it already swept the low of Asia only to sweep the high and then reject it. So it, it cleared out liquidity on both sides of the Asia range. We did not take out this high though uh, from the uh, previous day nor did we obviously take out the previous day's high, which is noted up here. But these are key levels that you wanna have on your chart when you're trading the uh, silver bullet. So what we saw, and you know, I already went through the SMT divergence piece, so you have that in the back of your mind, is at 10 o'clock, and this is a five minute chart, we're gonna stay on the five minute chart initially. So at 9.50, we have this big down candle, it breaks structure, it leaves behind this fair value gap. Price comes down, look how close it is to the previous day's low. So the draw on liquidity, in my eyes, is obvious. It's getting close, but hasn't taken it yet. It's way closer to the previous day's low than it is the previous day's high. And generally, price will take out the previous day's high or previous day's low. So uh, knowing that, when we get to the 10 o'clock time frame, we've got this fair value gap. Now, if we look at right where the fair value gap starts and we measure that out, five points is right up here. You do not get stopped out and yet you hit your five points. So you didn't have to get real tricky with the entry, but I just want to point out and I'll zoom in a little bit more to make it easier to see is This fair value gap, and we'll just extend it over. That bearish fair value gap, when you look at the middle of that, since it's such a big fair value gap, you could probably expect, since price came down here and failed, it got so close, think about it, the low was 41.27, and it only needed to go four more points to take out the previous day's low, and it didn't, but it left behind this big fair value gap. So as it's pulling back, it almost completely fills it in. It fails to, but it gets close. So if you're if you're somewhere between a quarter of the way into the fair value gap, 
um, or a third of the way, you could even just get a better entry. But it wouldn't have mattered in this case because you wouldn't have gotten stopped out if you're using a five point stop loss and you still would have got your profits. This five minute fair value gap kind of played a big role in today's price action that really wasn't super clean. Um, let's look over at the two to three period. So two o'clock, what do we have? We have this, well, first of all, during lunch, it basically just consolidates. And where is it in consolidating in? Like for a moment, just totally ignore the wicks and look at the bodies. Uh, ICT talks us, tells us the bodies tell the story, the wicks do the damage. All of these bodies are inside this fair value gap and then it drops down. So as it comes back up and then it comes down, we have a fair value gap for the PM session and finally gets into that at 1440, that candle. So five point stop loss is up here and you would have had to wait until 345 to have hit your profit target. Um, so it's, you know, that's 45 minutes past the silver bullet, but the entry time is inside of that. So granted, this is hindsight. When I was doing this real time, I'm just going to be honest with you guys, I did not take this trade. It's way easier uh, to see this in hindsight, but that's why we do it. We do it to train ourselves and to build confidence and to hopefully not overcomplicate this. The other last thing I wanna show is, which I normally don't do, is NQ. So let's take a look at that really quick. Now, if you've heard me talk about dollar and the indices, what I've said multiple times is that when you see them going in the same direction, just wait for a market structure shift and then go in the opposite direction. So in this case, uh, to my point, you have dollar strengthening and you had NASDAQ strengthening. And this is a five minute chart here. So while we don't get any good trades in the AM, uh, because, well, that's not necessarily true. You, you see that once this thing made the higher high, I just would not have had the confidence to take this because it may have just been a quick sweep and then now it's going to go south. So for NQ, this part, while it, in hindsight, clearly was a great long trade, but you'd have been going against dollar. So, and so remember what I said, when they go in the same direction, I wanna see a market structure shift. This is, there's not a market structure shift here yet. And you might say, well, here's this little swing low and that's taken out. Uh, that's, uh, that's not enough for me. That's, so as price is going higher this entire time, because we, we all know now that NASDAQ just kept on trucking. But if you look at, 1400 time frame for this the PM silver bullet session. NQ finally exhausts its run and it we get this nice uh, expansion candle and it um, well it itself does not break this uh, structure right here. The next candle does and inside of that there is the fair value gap. That's a that's pretty clean price action in comparison to the others. Uh, or ES, and so if you were gonna trade NASDAQ, you'd wanna trade it with 20 points instead of five because the volatility of it, it's generally it moves by a magnitude of four times more than ES. So ICT says that 20 in NQ is like five in ES. So if you would have got in inside of this fair value gap and 20 point stop loss is up here, you don't get stopped out at all. And if you look at this low that was made, that liquidity draw right there is 20 points so or 23 points. So you would have got your 20 inside of that drop. So just another way of when you see when you see one market looking strong and the other one's not uh, following in suit, um, maybe just keep this in mind is even though if you might be stuck on like, I only trade ES, that's fine. You know, you, you trade your plan. I just wanted to take a moment and show uh, another reason why you could still look at an, another market uh, that's honestly uh, also correlated with ES and the price action might show uh, a better entry for you. So, and traders, one other thing that I forgot to say that's important because this has burned me in the past. So when 
when ES, or excuse me, when the dollar and the indices, whichever one, if they're going in the same direction, until I get a market structure shift, I don't fight that tide. So in, in hindsight, in, in double hindsight, um, you know, NQ totally ignored dollar strength. And so we had this beautiful pullback that, again, in hindsight, was like crystal clear. Oh, it would have been fantastic. Um, there's a small fair value gap right here. So as this thing's, it, it hasn't broke structure to really show a market structure shift. So as this thing comes up, gives you another opportunity, you, you actually could have gone for some long trades until you see the market structure shift. Because look at the difference here. Like even if you wanted to count this one, you know, a lot of times what I see is when I see a swing level taken, um, I want to see the next one taken as well because it could just be a sweep like this was. So this little liquidity sweep, it rejects, it comes right back up. So if you follow this thing up, like here's a swing low. What happens? It sweeps it, keeps going. Now we have these swing levels that are, those are, these are broken here. This is broken here. Now we're starting to get multiple breakdowns. This is the market structure shift. Not just one time being swept, at least not in my opinion. So I just wanted to also clarify to say that just because dollar and a particular indice is going in the same direction, you, I think, I mean, you need to do your own back testing, but you, you can be confident that you can trade with the direction that dollar is going until price action shows you that it's actually changing direction. So anyway, back to the main video. Traders, I hope that today was a successful learning day for you um, in the markets, whether you were taking trades or tape reading. I hope you took more from the market than it took from you. May the ticks be forever in your favor. Peace out.